Hi, <clears throat> this is the second model of the spatial inference section. In this lecture, we are going to see the probabilistic framework of the geostatistical estimated called Krieging. And uh, this is a very important line that uh, completely separates two types of geostatistical practice. We can make very grams and use geostatistical estimated of Krieging without realizing the theoretical framework and probabilistic contest in, in which uh, this set of tools develops. But we will only truly understand and be critical about the results obtained if we really perceive this theoretical formalism. This is the second model of the last section of this introductory course of geostatistics. Uh, as we're going to see, Krieging is the name of a large family of geostatistical interpolators. And this lecture is about the probabilistic framework of Krieging. Uh, in, last, uh, in last lecture, we have seen the properties we wish the geostatistical estimator had. I mean, the structural proximity and the clustering property. Now we'll see two quality criteria geostatistical estimators should observe. For example, suppose we know the reality, and suppose this is the real image, this 2D version of a real image of porosity of a reservoir, for example. From this real, uh, this real image, we take two different set of samples. The first one, we take uh, 30 samples, and we take another set with uh, another samples here. Now, based on those samples, we create two, one interpolator, just one interpolation, we create a model A with, the, with this, based on these samples. And based with this set of samples, the largest one with one of the samples, we create a second interpolated model, model B. Now, as you can see, <coughs> uh, as you know the reality, this is the reality again, and you can compare with those two models obtained with different set of samples. Of course, you can notice that the second model, this one, is more rich. We can obtain those patterns here and there and so on that we cannot reach with the poor sample set. But let, let us uh, have a look to the statistics, in particular to the mean. This is the mean of the real values, the real mean. And this is the mean of model A and mean of model B. Now here comes the first criteria. We would like our estimator, no matter it is, uh, would have the same mean of the reality. Now, if, uh, as we know the reality, also we can compare, for example, this pixel here with the, the equivalent pixel of the model A. And we can do uh, the same exercise, the same comparison for all pixels at every location. And, uh, based, on, and based on those pairs, we can plot those pairs in a diagram where we have here the estimated values, model A, and the real values. <clears throat> and we get this cloud here. We do the same, we can do the same exercise in model B. As, as we can see, the model B, the richest one, is gets a more narrow, less dispersed cloud and more aligned with the B sector than the model A. So that's uh, the second criteria. We would like that our estimator would have, <coughs> I would say, less dispersed clouds uh, between observed and the real values and more oriented through the B sector. Uh, and uh, this can obtain by, by minimizing this average here, the average of the square differences between the real values and the estimators. In short, 
these are the two quality criteria we wish to impose to the geostatistical estimate the unbiasedness and minimum estimation variance. Well, the global unbiasedness means that uh, implies that uh, the average of the estimators should be equal to the average of the real values here. Uh, the second criteria, minimum estimation variance. This second criteria implies that the average of the square root deviations, this one, should be minimum. So the one that allows <coughs> less dispersed clouds between real and estimated values. Now, <coughs> both quality criteria can be defined as accuracy and precision. Let us illustrate them with uh, this sketch with the B-plot real versus estimated values. The estimate, uh, the estimate is set accurate and, uh, and precise when it is global unbiased and also accomplish the minimum square differences of the deviations between real and estimated values. Now, the estimate here is accurate but without precision when the minimum square differences of the deviation is not accomplished, giving rise to the dispersed clouds around the B sector. The estimator here is precise but inaccurate when, when fails the global unbiasedness criteria. And <coughs> or it is imprecise in, and inaccurate when misses both criteria in this case here. Now, let us see the framework of the geostatistical estimator. Just take the, the first criteria we want to impose, the global unbiasedness. So, to build the unbiased estimator of uh, z x of 0 in all possible positions x of 0, based on known sample values, we must assure that the mean of the estimators is equal to the mean of the real values, equivalent real values at same location. Now it comes a problem, we do not know the real values. So this is the challenge. We need a framework that appropriately accommodates our data set and the physical phenomena. A framework to mimic some parts of the reality. For example, suppose a deterministic conceptual model of the reality that I want to model. And, uh, <clears throat> for example, I could use a deterministic model like the one we use, uh, like, the, for example, this wireframe uh, we use for the, for example, here to model the head of this warrior here. In this case, we are sure that uh, the interpolated, for example, smoothing, interpolating, polynomial interpolation, whatever, uh, is for sure accurate and precise because we know in advance what we are going to model. But uh, with heterogeneous natural phenomena, the, the things are different. A deterministic model of the reality implies a knowledge of the reality that usually we do not have in earth sciences. In other words, high heterogeneous phenomena and few data makes the deterministic models unrealistic in most situations in earth sciences. Now, uh, let us see a probabilistic framework of geostatistical estimator. And um, let us consider the samples, well, the samples here, the sample ZX of alpha as known outcomes of one random variable, this one here. So, but in uh, previous lectures, we could see that the sample values are not independent. We could see that by the variograms, since uh, the, the, the ZX of alpha values are not independent, they cannot be assumed to be outcomes of the same random variable. So this framework cannot be adopted. Now let's see another probabilistic framework. And let's cons let us consider at any unsupple location ZX of zero is considered to be a random variable located at uh, X of zero. One here. And the samples, Zx of alpha, 
are considered to be known outcomes of the set of the random variables located in the sample locations, those ones here. So if uh, the outcomes are correlated, uh, <coughs> they are not independent. The set of random variables the x of alpha must be considered correlated. And the set of random variables the x of alpha and the uh, x of zero at any ensemble location x0 are correlated and can be considered to be a spatial random function z of x. So this is the basis of our probabilistic framework of our geostatistical estimator. Now it comes the challenge how to infer estimate the unknown outcomes based on the known values here x of alpha. For that, uh, we need some assumptions about the model which allow any spatial inference procedure. For example, if we calculate the mean of the sample values, and if you assume it is a valid statistic for the entire area, and sample location area, we are assuming that the ensampled area is sufficiently homogeneous for considering value that hypothesis. In practice, the spatial homogeneity is equivalent to the stationarity of the mean of the random function model. So let us see in detail the two stationary assumptions, stationary of the mean and stationary of the variogram and covariance. Stationary of the mean uh, can be written in this way, the expectation of, uh, of z x of alpha is equal to the expectation of z x x zero is equal to constant. We assume that all random variables have the same mean, same expectation. So <coughs> this is important to note that uh, the assumptions about the model cannot be validated, but they can be considered appropriate or not for our data or our case study. Now let's see the stationary, what, what does it mean? The stationarity of the variogram and covariances. It means that at uh, <coughs> the variogram value here does not depend on the location of the samples x1, x2, x3, x4, but only on the separating uh, separation uh, vector h so in other words uh, for each leg h we consider the mean of the product which is covariance of the mean of the square of differences square difference sorry the value group are representative of the cloud of the pair of values for each h so this point here representative of this cloud this <coughs> this is a box plot and this point is representative of this cloud and so on and so on. So here come some references on this topic. The classic uh, Isaacs and Srivastava, the introductory book of just statistics. Uh, <coughs> the, the Pierre Gouvert's book, Just Statistics for Natural Resource Evaluation. The, the classical mining just statistics of journal. And for those that uh, Portuguese readers, you can get this this one.